All right, everyone. So we're going to continue on with the overhaul of our 62 TE transmission. So we're done with our input assembly and pump assembly. So that's going to be set aside. Uh, the benefit to going through one assembly at a time is now we're not going to cross mix parts. So because our input assembly is fully assembled, we don't run the risk of having anything from the input assembly getting mixed up with anything from the case assembly. Typically that's not too much of an issue, but it is something to just take into consideration. The trans doesn't seem as overwhelming that way. So what we have left to do is we're gonna go in and start inspecting the planetary gear set, the braking clutches, and to get to those, we have to take out the valve body and the back cover. So we'll probably leave off with leaving um, the low reverse piston, which is in the back still in the case. Um, so we're going to take the valve body off. Um, that will gain us access to the 2-4 piston, which is this front piston right here. We need, there's a little transfer tube that has to come out to be able to uh, pull the, the piston out and then also to get the, uh, the braking clutches out. So the braking clutches, again, are, are needed to hold a member of the planetary gear set to prevent it from turning while the apply clutch applies to one of the members of the planetary gear set and then the third member is an output. So we'll take out our first sun gear. So this is going to spline to our reverse clutches in the input assembly. Um, and it has a singular gear right there. So what we're looking for is we're looking to make sure that nothing's, you know, that none of the teeth are broken, nothing's chipped, nothing's coming apart. Um, we do have clutches, these, these spline onto the two four clutches, um, which are braking clutches. Uh, they look okay. And then also our thrust washers all right as well. So we'll put that in the in, on top of the input assembly just because that's where that goes. Um, now what we're left with is we have to, have to take the valve body off. That's going to consist of taking this side pan off. And the side pan consists, consists of a mix of 10 mil bolts and 8 mil bolts. So we'll have a tray to hold everything together. Now we got the side cover off for the valve body. There's a couple of electrical connections that we need to be wary of. So this is our solenoid pack for all the shift solenoids for our transmission. Um, we also have a pressure sensor and then our range sensor. Now our range sensor, our torque converter, solenoid, all that stays wired to this because it comes out as a unit. But we do have to take out the range sensor. So you gotta be very careful to not break the range sensor locking clip while you pop it up. And then you can just use the clip right there to hold that into place. So to take the valve body out, there's a couple different fasteners. With the exception of one, we're gonna be taking out only the hex head bolts. The Torx bolts, we're not gonna remove. And I said the exception of one with the exception of the uh, rooster comb detent. So that's gotta come out first and then we can take out all of these seven millimeter bolts that go around the perimeter of the valve body and we can pull the valve body off. One of the things we do need to note is we are gonna run into, there's three transfer tubes on this side of the valve body that when we take it out, we're gonna to have to get out. Those go into the compounder, which is in the back of the, uh, the case of the transmission. We also have to be wary of too, the uh, manual valve it has a little pin down here and it breaks very easily if you're not careful with removing it. So we'll start by taking the detent off and then go around taking the remainder of the seven mil bolts out. One of the things to know when taking these out, some valve bodies will have different length fasteners. This valve body, actually all the fasteners are the same length. So conveniently, we don't have to keep in order, but it is important to know what holes they came out of. When these come out, they do tend to make a witness mark. 
So keep that in mind. It's very easy to get it into one of these drain holes and potentially damage something. Okay, that should be our last fastener, so we're going to have to try to lift up. So those are those transfer tubes again for the compounder. Um, we can put those back in the case now or we can leave them out. We are going to go into it, so we'll leave those attached. And then there's that manual valve pin that's very, very easily broken. So we'll set this aside. So now we have two pistons that we can check. We have our two four piston and then our low reverse is down into this port right here. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the pressure plate to vacuum pressure uh, test these, or sorry, um, pneumatically pressure test these. Um, you can you can get away with doing the 2-4, um, but low reverse becomes a little bit difficult because you don't have a way to seal off this whole port. Um, this is our little transfer tube from the valve body end to the 2-4 piston. So what we're looking for is we're looking for any distortion on that seal. Uh, that small amount right there is, is pretty normal um, for one of these seals, so it's not anything to be alarmed of. This will get replaced in an overhaul kit. So what we'll do now is we'll use our rubber tipped air gun again to go into that piston and then we're going to listen for it to snap. So that piston is uh, operating as it should so we shouldn't have any issues with that piston. It doesn't mean the clutches aren't going to be hot. So now that we have the valve body off and that little transfer tube we can go into removing the clutches. Now, there is a return piston behind this 2-4 piston assembly. When you're removing the piston, you don't really have to compress it. It's not that big a deal. Going back in, we will have to compress it to be able to get this snap ring in place. So the snap ring is slightly harder to get out than normal snap rings, um, simply because of the tension that it's under because of the return spring. Again, we're going to stack the components as they come out, that way we don't get them mixed up. This piston can sometimes be a bit of a bear to get out. Okay, so here's our 2-4 piston. Here's that port that we were just pressure checking that with. So we're gonna look on the back side and see if the seals popped out at all. There's an inner and an outer seal. Uh, the inner seal's right here. The outer seal is going against this outer edge of the piston. Um, we air checked it and we found that it was okay. So we're assuming that it's gonna be an okay piston, um, but it's still a good you know, opportunity to inspect. Uh, note that there is a tang here this tang corresponds with a casting in the case that way that this will line up with that port so this will only go in theoretically one way um, i'm sure it can be forced but you know still uh still want to line that up to make sure it's going in the right way so the next thing we're going to take out is the return spring and this is just to return this piston back into a neutral position when hydraulic pressure is released from it and then we're going to take out our planet carrier 
and that's going to have our 2-4 clutch on it. So we'll look at our clutch pack first, and then we'll look at the planetary set. So the clutch pack is, is rather hot. These are braking clutches, so um, these can get a little bit hotter um, when you're uh, decelerating. Um, and it reduces torque to slow the vehicle down. Um, there's nothing that's too abnormal with these. Um, these are supposed to be yellow in color, um, and we'll, we will notice a thickness difference in the steels versus the low reverse. The low reverse also, too, have a different friction compound than the 2.4, so they're going to be a darker shade um, as natural because they can handle more pressure. So we'll leave those right there. And then we'll look at, we have two sets of planet carrier set to take a look at. So our first is going to be our planet carrier. Um, what you want to look for is we have four small pinion gears. We want to look to all of them and make sure that there's no teeth chipped on them, um, that they have enough thrust play up and down because they do have little thrust bearings. Um, and they, they appear to be all good. There's also a needle bearing right there. We want to make sure that spins freely. Um, and that these welds, this is the crucial part, that these welds are okay. That's the only thing ho holding uh, this pinion gear in. The pinion shaft is welded, it's friction welded in um, and prevents it from turning. So we can actually take this apart. So here's our, our planet carrier as it comes apart. We can get a better view. We can get a better view of the other side friction welds. Um, the thrush washers are all in and then all the teeth of the gears are all okay. So what can happen with these is these friction welds can break. And what that causes, that causes that pinion trundle to come out and to grind into another member of the planetary gear set. Um, it, can, it can run uh, quite, the, quite the gamut of damage when it does that. Usually what happens is none of this stuff wants to come out. Um, we also have our annulus gear or ring gear, depending on what manufacturer you're dealing with. Um, right here we have the actual gear face in the middle. Um, we're again looking for any chipped teeth or anything along those lines. Everything looks to be in an okay order and there's nothing that's broken. Um, this gear set didn't have, or this transmission I should say, didn't have gear set and noise. So it's not an issue that we should be, that we need to be worrying about, but during an overhaul, especially under warranty, these are the parts that make it expensive. Um, these are considered the hard parts of the transmission. So you want to be very wary when you're replacing these because they can get expensive very quickly. Uh, one of the other things to note too, um, with planetary gear sets and in terms of like a transmission. So let's say you have a vehicle that's fairly low mile, it's 30,000 miles on it, but it's of a model year run that's been around for about five or six years. If you replace the transmission with a remanufactured unit, you may be taking out that 30,000 mile transmission and putting in a transmission that technically has brand new clutches and steels in it, but the hard parts like the planetary gear sets, the valve body, the drum assemblies, the case may have upwards of 100,000 miles on it. So it is something to consider when you are looking at putting a remanufactured transmission in a vehicle, um, is that is something that, that could, be, could be an issue. So we, we have another needle bearing down here and that's going to go on our final sun gear. So this is going to ride on the sun gear. Again, we're looking for any pitted teeth. Um, we're looking for that this bearing surface is good. Everything's all, all okay with that. So we can set that aside. That actually lives inside of this planetary gear set. So we have one more ring gear here um, as well as um, the pinion. So this will probably leave in the case for now because um, we do have to take apart the side case to be able to get to it. Um, but we can still inspect the teeth of it and everything looks to be in, in order on that particular set. So we have one more clutch disc for the 2-4 to get out. And then we have a separator plate. So again, our last clutch disc. Looks to be a little bit burnt, but not too terrible. So our next, plate, our next clutch pack we have is our low reverse. And our low reverse is much like our overdrive clutch inside of the input assembly to where we have a reaction plate that's set, or a separator plate I should say, that separates the 2-4 clutch from the low reverse and is stationary. So we have two snap rings that we're gonna have to get out. And we have to keep, 
keeping track of, of, of where the order is. So inside these trans cases again can be very sharp. So try to use a screwdriver to locate stuff and to pull it out simply to mitigate you from getting cut. first snap ring out so we can get our separator plate out. Much like the separator plates in our input assembly, this is going to have a direction that it needs to go in. Uh, conveniently, there's an irregular pattern on the lugs of the case. So this can go only in one way, but there is a taper on one end and it's flat on the other. Um, now again, the braking clutches are gonna spline to the case of the transmission to hold one of those planetary gear members from rotating. So we can get out our first clutch disc. Um, again, these are darker in color because they can handle more torque and it also differentiates them from the 2.4 um, clutch pack. So our first one there, we have another snap ring that we need to remove. snap ring is much thinner than the one we just took out. Um, again, you want to make sure that you're getting it in the right locations. You can get these mixed up and depending on how these are spaced, um, it's going to change the clutch pack clearance. And then we can get our last set of clutch packs out for this end of the case. Here's our low reverse clutch interesting pattern on that steel. Um, now these got these got pretty hot. You can actually see to where there's a nice big blue mark to where these clutch discs did get get fairly hot. Um, the clutch pack isn't doesn't seem to be warped but these are these are definitely used. These probably would fall under a non-usable category simply because of the uh, glazing on the steel discs. There still is some clutch material though. You can see the fluid flute still cut into the friction disc. All right, so we're gonna leave this uh, video here. Um, the next step would be to spin the trans around and take the side case off. But we have then our of our transfer gears that we'd need to remove our top transfer gear to be able to get this last um, planet carrier out. And then we could have access to the low reverse piston. Um, as it looks, it doesn't look like they're burnt in the sense that they had a hydraulic issue. They look like they're just worn because of the uh, vehicle being driven in normal use. Um, this did come out of a cargo van, so you know it did get it did get to see some use. So in the next video, we'll start to reassemble this and then go into the compounder assembly and uh, continue on with our overhaul of this 62 TE transmission. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.